Uh, I've been sitting next to a lovely lady, two lovely ladies, and uh, I found out that uh, one of them has to leave, like, right now. So I'm introducing her, and I have a couple of things to say, but I'll be, I'll be here right after a lady who, as they say, needs no introduction when you hear the name Florence Henderson. I don't get that long, Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Chuck. Uh, I've spent many hours with you, and I love you. Uh, boy, a lady came up to me uh, just before the start, and she said, thank you so much for telling me to get that shingles vaccine shot. <laughs> because year before last, I received this prestigious honor, and I had the worst case of shingles. I was in so much pain. But it was such a great event that it, it, it took away some of the pain. And uh, Debbie, you're so right about this, this dais. And I, I would love to talk to you later about the lifestyle lift. <laughs> Have you seen that commercial? I want to know how in the hell that thing works. I really do. But um, I, too, was blessed to be at Michael and Terrence's wedding. Uh, we all sang, and it was such a great day. And Gabrielle, uh, I don't know if you know this. You were a baby probably, that I co-starred with your father on Broadway in Noel Coward's last musical, The Girl Came to Supper. Did you see it? Okay. And I adored, I adored your mother. Um, so, you're lucky, you're very lucky if you know Michael Feinstein's music. You're really lucky if you know what a great singer he truly is. You're really, really, really lucky if you've had the opportunity to work with him, as I have. And you're incredibly blessed to know him as a friend. God bless you, Michael. I love you. He's a one-man gang with an excellent staff of people. He's done it all. He's got three radio stations on the air right now in Los Angeles. One is Country, KKGO Country. He's got K Mozart AM. And he's got K Jazz, and, it be, and he ha makes sure the music is right on K Jazz. And believe me, it is. It's with great pride that I introduce one of the giants in broadcasting, one of the top owners in this town, Mr. Saul Levine. <laughs> Start out by saying uh, Mozart, Beethoven, Brahms. What does that have to do with Michael Feinstein? A lot. Those were the great of the greatest, which is argumentable, but composers of classical music in Europe. In America today, we have the American Songbook. We have the the great composers who, in their own way, uh, I believe, in my opinion, are equally, equally talented. And that, and that brings in Michael Feinstein. Because Michael Feinstein has done more than any other person in America, to my, to my knowledge. And I have programmed standards, and I've programmed jazz. He has done more to preserve this art form of music than anyone else that I know. And why is it so important that this, this American music be preserved? It's important because it, it, it is the, the essence of what is, what is American. It has been, to some extent, fading. But Michael has worked to preserve it and present it. And I'm just going to name a few, few of the uh, individuals whose songs are a part of our everyday life, although in the last 10, 20 years, perhaps less so, and, and, and there's a need for us to bring that back, and Michael is, is doing that. And, and there are, when you get to be 40. <laughs> All right, a few, a few names, a few names. Um, Berlin, Izzy Berlin, Irving Berlin, finally. <clears throat> Cole Porter. Sammy Kahn, Jerome Kern, Hoagie Carmichael, Duke Ellington. These names, these songs are part of, 
of everyday living for people who enjoy really, really, really great music. I met uh, Michael Feinstein, and when have I now, as to who knew him the longest, or, or met him the longest, I met him in 1985, the best of my recollection. There was a restaurant on um, La Cienga, a new chef, uh, Roy, is that Yamaguchi? Who, um, who started that. Unfortunately, it only lasted about a year or two. He was ahead of his time with his cuisine. But playing that night, performing, there was a man named Michael Feinstein. Uh, Gary Owens, who was doing a show for us at the time, was kind enough to take me over to introduce me. And uh, Michael was very interested in the jazz we were performing. And I think for a, a fair number of minutes, he was playing the piano and talking with me at the same time uh, about this. And then since that time, uh, my wife and I were continually running into Michael Feinstein here, there, whether it's Laguna Beach or in Hollywood or what have you. The thing that, that is so dominant about Michael and with all he is doing is his humility. I deal with a lot of people, a lot of artists. Humility is in short supply. So it, 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 really, it really is something extraordinary. The story was, was not fully told tonight about how Michael Feinstein uh, got started. And my recollection is, going back to the 1980s, when I heard it, that he uh, managed to meet Ira Gershwin, the lyricist, and um, Ira allowed him at that time to help him put some papers away, compile them, and then Ira realized how indispensable Michael Feinstein was. And that was the beginning of, of as, I, as I understand it, Michael's career with, with Gershwin. And, and, he, and he just could not have picked a, a greater composer, a greater composer to, to be affiliated with. The next, the next step that I think is so significant in, um, in American music, and also attributed to Gershwin, is a work called Porgy and Bess. Porgy and Bess was presented in 1935. It was a time when America was still very racist. He did a lot to, to, to knock down these barriers, a great deal. Gershwin was attacked by certain, certain people, and uh, regretfully, but it was a turning point also uh, in the presentation of, of pop music. And I could go on and on. We could talk about Michael's achievements, but just to repeat, that what he is doing is preserving an art form that is so American, so important, so, part, so much a part of our daily lives. And on a little note of, of levity, uh, my wife and I had dinner with, uh, with Michael, it must have been eight, nine years ago. And after dinner, he invited us to his home, and it was really amazing to see the archives of, of music that he has stored. And I mentioned to, to Michael, I forgot how I got started on this, talking about the older standards, that when I was four years old, there was a song that particularly intrigued me. It was called, Now's the Time to Fall in Love. Within three or four days, there arrived at my office a specially dubbed CD, Now's the Time to Fall in Love from Michael Feinstein. And just to show you how silly a four-year-old can be. Michael, would you join me in this? <laughs> I got a few lines here. Well, it goes like, lyrics go like this. The lyrics go like this. I get paid for this, you know. <laughs> uh, 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 well, you know what? Put it on the tab. OK, all right. Put it on the tab. All right, P potatoes, potato potatoes, potatoes are cheaper. Tomatoes are cheaper. Now's, now's the, the time, time to fall in love. love. The, the butcher, butcher, the baker, and the candlestick, candlestick maker. maker. All gave their price a downward shove. <laughs> Dick can sing the rest of it. Uh, we're, we're here every night, folks. <laughs> uh, I, I, <laughs> wasn't this fun? Yes. Now, now I, was, I was warned by some wise people not to do this. 
They said, they said, this is about Michael, not about you. And, uh, but, you know, after you've been broadcasting for 54 years, you're, you're entitled to a little silliness. So just, <laughs> that, was, that was delightful. And, and I've also worked with Mr. Pat Boone, and just, that just been had a marvelous experience. What, what a gentleman. And um, he's been so supportive of certain causes that I believe in very deeply, and I appreciate that. Thank you for me. So anyway, <clears throat> thank you very much, Michael, and, and that was so much fun. I didn't know how you would take this, but, but you, you have done so much for American music, and I don't think we, we all fully appreciate it. And I hope we, we, having gained more insight today, that we understand and appreciate that he's carried on this one-person battle to save American music, and, and he's done it. Thank you. Now the time of <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. You know, I can already feel the excitement building for our next Hollywood Media Professional Celebrity Showcase.